Here's a summary of how to do a solar heating survey for Solar Twin. This is a difficult house that I did myself in a very hot day in summer. Look at the sky. It had a diagonal roof that they wanted a special panel on. Here it is. We got it done. When you do a survey, don't treat it as final. Please ask Solar Twin to go through the whole thing with you as well. We can help you put the pieces together. Is it feasible? Look at the panelling position. If it's south, east or west or somewhere in between, it's usually OK. It needs to fit on the roof. If you're not sure, measure inside. 8.5 feet by 4.5 feet plus the pipes. Do you want a landscape panel or a portrait? Portrait is the usual. I recommend you put it on a pitch roof, but only on an A-frame if you can't fit it. All mounts are OK. They get um, good winter performance, but not so good in the summer. But it's a recommended thing if there are not too many in the house. Ground mount on an A-frame. Difficult, um, only okay if your header tank's one story up. Plumbing. If you've got a traditional low pressure vented hot water system, it's easy. That's a cylinder with a header tank, usually in the attic. You can usually do thermal stores. High pressure cylinders are technically feasible, but we're not doing them right now. And do check that your pipe runs are accessible. Heights and pressure. The panel should be no more than five meters above or below the water level of the header tank. That's usually okay in most homes. And can you get into the loft? You should be able to. Look at the hot water demand. You want to be supplying base load, not peak load. If there is, uh, if you're two people retired, living near the bungalow by the sea, let's say, and six grandchildren come in the summer, you don't spec the system for eight people, you spec it for two. Are there patterns of use between the day, week, and year? The ideal load, of course, is 365 days a year with a peak in summer. What's that? Holidays, holiday parks, caravan parks, that sort of thing. But domestic homes are good as well, because they use it seven days a week. Cylinder volume, at least 80 litres. For a grant, you need 110. Solar train goes on and off grants, like children on bicycles. Um, you need at least 100. And, you, we'd recommend 120. That's what most cylinders are. If you've got an intermittently occupied home, if you do think solar is worthwhile, you need a bigger cylinder, because you've got to store across several days. Planning. It's usually, solar twins usually viewed as a roof window by planners. It projects about 100 mil, that's a bit less than 4 inches. And uh, 100 to 80, 80 millimetres is usually regarded as permitted development by planners. This whole thing is up in a melting pot right now, so this may change. But you will need planning consent or some kind of consent for listed buildings, conservation areas, national parks, and areas where your permitted development rights have been removed. Health, safety and environment? Well, look at Legionella minimisation. If your header tank hasn't got a cover on it, or isn't insulated, you need to do that, for example. Roof access, you need to be able to get to that safely. You need a safe working platform. You need to be able to work in the loft safely, and you mustn't disturb nesting birds or bats. You may be able to get a licence for working near bats, but only in some circumstances from your local council. In terms of sizing the system, head count's the best. One panel is usually okay for one to four people. Consider dropping this upper limit from, from four to three if there's a hot water circulating loop because that dumps a huge amount of heat and it should be insulated before you do anything with solar. If there's a power shower, drop your upper limit to three. It uses lots of hot water. Or if there are invalids, or if there's a pool. If, you're a, if you've got a pool, you can put extra panels in and um, dump the uh, excess water in there because that will replace the water and heat it and save you fuel. If you've got two panels, you'll need a 250 to 300 litre cylinder. And that's Solar Twin, the system sizing. It's simple. Nearly all homes need just one panel. Now looking at the sorts of cylinders, we're going to look at low pressure vented cylinders. That's what most homes have. The benefits are you can keep your cylinder, they stratify and you get good value. But the downside is you need good harvest control. More about that later. A low pressure vented cylinder is the next one. That's uh, a twin coil cylinder. That can be done where a solar cylinder is pre-fitted, um, but you usually need to put a new cylinder in there because extra heat exchangers can't be added as a retrofit to existing cylinders. But you get less stratification and the performance can be marginally less. We recommend if you want high pressure water that you use a low pressure vented heat store. The header can either be integral with it or remote. That's for all sorts of benefits, uh, all sorts of systems, and it'll give you high pressure water and you can put all sorts of fuels in there as well wood, geothermal and so on. But you do need a large heat exchanger, a blender valve and a pressure vessel. 
and we may need to slow the pump down so the performance drops with slightly. Here's the open vented plumbing. Traditional header tank and open vented cylinder. And the pipes go to the solar twin, the cable goes to the, um, the pump. And it plumbs in very simply, the hot goes into the, the vent pipe. Don't use this as a plumbing diagram, there are mu there's much more detail which you need to know in our full installation method statement. This is just a schematic guide. If you've got high pressure, if you want high pressure hot water, put a heat stall in. That's a big volume of water with a heat exchanger in it. And you take the pipes off that, you send those off to a solar panel, and you bring them back to the top. And your mains water comes in, goes down to the bottom of the cylinder, goes up through the heat exchanger, comes out the top via a blender valve so you couldn't have any overheat risk. It's safe, it's simple, it's open vented. Hardness control, very important. Measure your parts per million calcium carbonate. There's lots more in the method statement if you want to convert between different units, but we're using parts per million calcium carbonate. Not calcium, calcium carbonate, they're different. Up to 99, you don't need any hardest control. Up to 199, you have a choice, you can do polyphosphate dosing or an iron exchange water softener. 200 up, you must use an iron exchange water softener. Unless you have an indirect system, of course, which could be a heat storage or a twin core system. These figures assume that the water authority gives you a high and a low hardness figure and you're using the highest. Drop those thresholds by 20%, in other words 200 becomes 160 or 100 becomes 80 if you're only given one reading because that reading could fluctuate. Or if you've got intermittent property, intermittently occupied properties like holiday homes because you get a higher, higher temperatures which can uh, increase the risk of scaling. Or fortic cylinders, they also degrade the, the um, Fernox limescale to prevent it to some degree. Looking at the technical features of Solar Twin, it's a patented simple system which can freeze without cracking. Water is the heat transfer fluid, the panels are pumped by solar electricity at very low flow and variable speed. The pipes are microbore so the bubbles can get out without valves on the roof. It's a low pressure open vented system, the heat is stored separately. You can heat it directly or indirectly but usually directly. If directly, we don't need to replace the cylinder. Water will stratify over, over cold and you'll get continual pumping at high temperatures which means you can export heat. Multiple panels can be run in parallel and you must back up your heating to 60C at the end of the day. Thank you for using SolarTrain. Why don't you use us? Goodbye from Barry at SolarTrain.